Erev Tov Chabrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live, our Shabbat special service, also in cooperation with the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. It's what we started off being before. Just a reminder for those of you that are, are listening there, because we do on the Noon Institute of Biblical Research, we search all documents and try to have an open and objective opinion as we do our research, not trying to find a bias one way or the other, but to try to find the common thread in what documents do show us from different biblical manuscripts from around the world. I bring this out because I am looking into a subject, Planet X, something that has uh, really intrigued people for quite some time. Many have believed this to be a conspiracy theory. I even myself was hesitant to say yay or nay on it. Just wasn't really sure as I watched the different dates come and go as it got near that time. Uh, but now, recently, as they have discovered what they call Planet Nine, the ninth planet in our solar system, it's given new rise to questions about is there really a Planet X or a Nibiru that is in our solar system? And what does, what's its impact for the, for the Earth itself, for humankind? And as I've done my own research, I think I've come to a, at least an opinion on it that I wanted to share with you this evening. Now, let me just state this before we get started in here. I do not believe, now this is just a personal take, I don't think that Planet X is coming this year in 2016. I think it's still a couple of years out, or maybe even just a little bit further. There was a window given for this planet, I think from either 2012 to 2020 or 2013 to 2020, something like that. And I'm kind of more of the opinion that it'll be of the latter end of that cycle there. However, I could be wrong on that. It could come even at the beginning of the cycle. Not really sure to say the least on that. There I go again, but we're going to get into this and show you some of the things that I've discovered along the way. It's a lot of information, so I've tried to compact it down uh, short phases of each thing there. Uh, and we're hoping to have also uh, Bob, um, Bob Fletcher on with us uh, very soon. Uh, I did get with Bob. He agreed to come on our program. Uh, I want to interview him, but I first wanted to do our own uh, investigative report on Planet X uh, before we have Bob on so we'd have a little bit more to talk about once we have him in. Uh, I kind of titled this Planet X. Is, uh, is this God's final judgment? Well, don't know how we'll do it on YouTube itself, but that's the title of our, our uh, document that we put together here. Now, this was one of the very photos that I was first sent years ago that actually just sent chills through me when I first saw this. A brother sent this to me. Don't know if he still listens here on YouTube, but he sent this photo. I don't know if it had the words in there or not. But the scripture there was Luke 21, 26, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. That is certainly one incredible photo and it really got my attention. This photo here uh, really just, it did a lot to me when I first saw this. I could only imagine what would it look like standing on earth and suddenly seeing something this huge near our earth uh, flying past us there. And it's one of the reasons why that men have been digging underground tunnels everywhere ever since this Planet X uh, has been known about. And, and as far as Bob Fletcher and listening to some of his interviews there that he's already done, he speaks about as early as 1983, I believe, or 1982, forget which year it was. But Ronald Reagan was president at that time. And this is when the big push uh, for getting ready for Planet X all began. Now, I just happened to be, uh, when we were traveling here on our last trip here in Calais, France, right out, right down the street from the hotel we were staying in, they had this huge underground uh, uh, tunnel boring machine. And this is what they used to make tunnels with. This is basically a giant drill bit. It even looks like one if you look at it kind of close there. I don't have all the images here that I could share with you. On the back side, though, it's like you got someone, uh, the drill bit that hooks into a drill. The front side for, for, you know, to drill holes through mountains with. Well, even as Bob Fletcher says, he said the Chinese have the largest one in the world. And you could literally drive, I believe it's four semi-trucks side by side after that drill bit goes through the mountain. Well, you can see this one here. It does tower over me pretty big, 
but uh, it's nothing compared to what they do have. Anyway, it brings into my mind also another scripture from Revelation chapter 6, verse 15, when it says, And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. This is why you have all this boring going on. They are going to hide themselves in the mountains. I've been, in fact, friends, we have been in all kinds of tunnels in our life, especially as much traveling we do for the, for the, for the Israeli News Live. We have been everywhere, countries all over the world, huge tunnels. Some of them you just wonder if there's ever going to be an end to it. I've even been in the tunnel that goes from uh, France to England, the underground tunnel there. Of course, you don't get really to see that because you're riding it by train. But when Bob Fletcher talks about giant drill bits for these people to go hide in, this is one example right here. And from the looks of it, this is the one where two semi-trucks can easily uh, pass after this thing drills through the mountain itself as well. Now, I have heard that these things can drill more than a mile an hour. I can't possibly imagine this happen happening. Uh, and, I, and I've not been able to corroborate if that is so or not. But nonetheless, it is a fact that, that the human race is trying to find a way to overcome this incredible Planet X that no doubt is definitely coming our way. It is believed to have been uh, what caused the Andalusian destruction during Noah's time. There's even some suggestion that during the time of Moses when he was here, that this is what caused all the catastrophes on the earth at that time there, all the miraculous things that happened. Uh, and it's, it's hard to say. I know when we look at the story of Moses in Genesis, we see that Moses tells Pharaoh, this will happen, this will happen, this will happen, if you don't do what God says. If you read it from the book of Jasher, which is, by the way, quoted by our own Bible canon, where it says the rest of these stories are written in the book of Jasher. Um, there again, we can't corroborate all these documents and what this means or that means or why is it this translation or is it completely accurate. We don't know, but we just mentioned this for just for knowledge's sake, but the book of Jasher suggests that when Moses came down at God's command that God foretold him what was going to happen and the events transpired one after another after another. Uh, I kind of take the Genesis account because that's what I'm used to taking, and, and, uh, but nonetheless, uh, there is suggestions that that could have been what happened that the planet passed at that time. Now keep it in mind, when Planet X passed during the time of what they call uh, the Andalusian destruction, when Noah was saved by the, uh, the ark that God commanded him to build, we also must understand that the planet at different times as it passes had different effects on the earth. At that time, it caused the water to rise up over all the mountains. Never was the earth burned with fire when it passed by, maybe with the exception of the time during Moses when there was hailstones that flew out of the sky. That could have been part of the tale of Planet X. Now that's also what they believe is going to happen this time. The first passing will only begin to shake the earth. But as it goes around the sun and comes back around, uh, if I understand right, it's when we'll be into the tail of this, and this will be when the earth will be rocked with unbelievable stones of fire from the tail of this thing. Could this be the final judgment of God? That's one reason why I hold that I believe that planet X would pass actually after the death of the two witnesses. Now, some people have in mind that there's still another three and a half years. From what I can tell in Scripture, and even in other biblical, uh, non-canon biblical accounts, it appears, too, that at the end of the two witnesses, this is when God's final judgment comes upon the earth. So, regardless of which way you look at it, it's still judgment is coming. I want to go back to the Scripture in Revelation, though, and I want to share with you more of what the sixth chapter of Revelation states from verses 12 to 17. And I beheld when he had opened <clears throat> the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, 
and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. That sounds more like something this planet would do. Every island and mountain, they were moved out of its places. Do you really think that you're going to be safe when you're inside these tunnels under the ground? If the mountain is moving and you've got these little wormholes all bored into these mountains, I don't think you're going to be safe. In verse 15 it says, The kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman, every free man, hid themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains. I want you to notice how it words that. Kings of the earth... That's all these world leaders, all right? The great men and the rich men. Everybody's got a lot of money. They're going to be allowed in. And the chief captains, all your military leaders, and the mighty men. I would assume that's the, not just the military leaders, but the, the, the truly military valor ones that they want to use for fighting and stuff after this is all over with. And every bondman. That one kind of caught me by surprise, every bondman. Unless these are just like enlisted servicemen that they bring in in order to help run things. In other words, you become the servant while you're underground. So keep in mind, by the way, if you are going underground and you happen to see this video and you have plans of being part of this underground thing, but you've been swore to secrecy, you may be the cook. You may become a slave while you're there. And every free man hid themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains. I think the free men are those that know it's coming and have been preparing themselves by their own digging of caves and stuff, not looking at how to really overcome such a judgment. You don't overcome it. You need to know Yeshua as your own personal Savior. He's the one that'll save you during this particular cataclysmic event. Verse 16, And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. And you remember the Bible does say when, that earth, when the heavens open up like a scroll, every eye shall see him and shall behold him. See, so they finally do find out that yes, Yeshua is the one that is coming back. And this is why they cry out for those rocks to fall on them. They find out that it's a judgment after all. But unfortunately for them, it's too late. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? Again, one of the reasons why I entitled the video the way I did. Planet X, is this the judgment of God? Another interesting thing, if you ask me about this as well, is Pope Francis hints of a brief papacy. This was on BBC News, March 14th of 2015. Now, I want to share this with you. Pope Francis suggests he may resign his papacy like his predecessor, rather than remain at the Vatican for life. The pontiff made the comments during an interview with Mexican television making the second anniversary of his election. I have the feeling that my pontificate will be brief. Four or five years. I do not know even two or three, he said. That kind of caught my attention as well. Four or five years, or two or three years. Now, you can't help but wonder, is he speaking about from the time of his papacy that it began, or is he speaking from the time of the date he says it? I kind of wonder if he's not saying it from that date from 20, or actually in this case here, BBC March 14th, 20th, March 14th, 2015. So I looked at this as far as the timing, the four or five years he claims to retire. That would put it between 2019 and 2020. Then he states, or two or three years. That would be 2017 to 2018. Now, if you keep in mind, it could be from the time of his papacy begins, then the 2018 would actually reflect uh, the, the four to five years, and we'd be 2016 would be reflecting the two to three years. But we must not forget what Yeshua said in Mark chapter 13, verse 32. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, Neither the Son, but the Father. Hmm. Now, some people have actually argued that that happens to be the, on the, uh, during Yom Kippur, that that day right before there where the moon is coming over, nobody really knows. Well, you have to understand, though, he says, neither the Son knew it. 
Well, I guarantee you one thing, Yeshua would have been the guy who would have known when that day fell on the calendar back during that time or in the future as well. That's not the issue at all. In fact, I found, I believe it's in the book of Enoch, where it also specifies some of these same words here, but it has nothing to do with the wording you're thinking of. When he speaks of that day, no man will know the day nor the hour. That's what we're finding out about this planet X. You cannot predict when it's coming. And in a few minutes, we'll go into exactly why that is. But the Vatican's been very busy. They built the Lucifer telescope there. Now that telescope there happens to be uh, over there uh, in Arizona. It was built, I forget which year that was actually built in, but it's an infrared telescope. And by the way, in order to track Planet X, you must have an infrared telescope. Which brings me to another thought as well, something I did not inject into this particular video, wished I had, and that is the, uh, in Alaska and, uh, and two other points in the world where they have built this huge um, uh, electrical grid there that they say that, well, conspiracy theorists, conspiracy theorists you say the United States built the HARP, uh, it's called the HARP, in order to uh, change the weather patterns. But according to Russian uh, intelligence, it's believed that this harp was designed to be able to find wormholes at the North Pole. And I believe they're even wanting to do this at the South Pole. Now, I haven't gotten much into this as of yet, but ever since I've heard about this and knowing the United States is doing this in the wormhole, it makes me think of the prophetic uh, side of also Planet X, Wormwood. Is there a connection between that? Something I'll be praying about and investigating a little further. I want to share with you a video, though, that Pope Francis did here, and I think it was very enlightening. And there again, these are the little telltale signs that we see that make it very obvious that they know what's going on. Watch what the Pope says on one of his trips there and aboard his, uh, his uh, Pope airplane, I guess you would call it. If I may use a strong word, I would say that we are at the limits of suicide. I'm certain that almost all of those who were in Paris at COP21 are conscious of this and want to do something. Can you imagine that? As he says there, we are at the edge of suicide. I mean, this is just nuts that the Pope would actually make a statement like that. So it lets you know that this is a serious situation. This is not just something that's just passive that's going on. If he talks about it like suicide, we're not just talking about a little mild climate change. We're talking about something that's going to be drastic, friends, very drastic. Anyway, Pedro Creel and Pope Francis embrace at a first meeting in over 1,000 years. This was on the Sputnik News on February 13th of 2016. And I thought it was very important as well, something I mentioned to you already, that Patriarch Creel and Pope Francis met in Havana, Cuba, for a historic meeting between the two, two churches, pledging to come together for the future of Christianity. That's what the article states there. Now, my question is, is why did they come together? Why, after over a thousand years of church conflict, do they finally decide to come together? Now, some are saying that the Pope knows that Planet X is coming and that the end of all humanity is on the verge of extinction and that they need to come together to try to unite the world. Basically, they're going to try to save what part of Christianity they want to save. Why do you think all these churches have been joining the Catholic Church? Why do you think the Pope says your money won't save you? Maybe he is referring to Planet X. When they speak about a new world order, I'm beginning to wonder if this new world order is nothing to do with the time frame in which we're living in now. I'm thinking this is what they're planning on doing as soon as this planet passes and they would come out in their so-called millennial reign. Do they really believe they can survive it? Do they think this is God's will to survive it this way? Don't think that the Catholic Church doesn't have a drove of archives of ancient biblical books there. In fact, the Russians even did a documentary once before speaking about how that the, uh, the Germans spent a fortune going and investigating and digging up the ancient 
writings all over the world to try to find out what type of technology they were using. They said that's one of the things that helped advance the Russian space agency, or not space agency, but the Russian uh, military and, of course, their aviation so rapidly. Even their bombing techniques from things that they dug up from ancient civilizations. And here we see in the photo on your screen here, Kirill, he is at the South Pole. So why did he go to the South Pole? Of course, you have that huge South Pole telescope that's down there too. What is it, $92 million it took to build this thing? Something like that. It's really a crazy price tag on this thing, but no doubt. I gotta, guess you got to get all the parts down there, so it's not cheap to ship all that stuff to the South Pole there. And of course, a lot of people believe that this has been put there in order to track uh, this Planet X because it is believed that it will come up from the bottom of the Earth coming right into our solar system. Very interesting. Now keep in mind, I do know there is a lot of false things out there about Planet X or Nibiru, whatever you want to call that there. There's been all kinds of uh, fake uh, photos and videos of a planet that can be seen from uh, the South Pole, etc. I don't think that that's what it is. I don't think necessarily that it can be seen with the naked eye as of yet, but perhaps the South Pole Telescope is the best way to see it, or perhaps maybe it can be seen by the naked eye by now. Who knows? It's hard to say. But, now we talk about all the issues regarding the different timings. And this is what's made so many people call it a conspiracy to begin with. But I think Carlos Munoz Ferrada, he was, a, was an astronomer uh, who was an incredible man. A documentary was done, a Chilean documentary was done. He was born in Colombia, South America himself. He died in 1999, a very old man in his 90s, but he came out about a year or two before he passed away and he shared some startling information about Planet X. He calls it Hercules, or something like, like Hercules, so to speak, that word there. But I want to share with you a little bit about this man here because what he says has a lot to do with why they can't predict exactly when this thing is coming. Carlos Manos. Ferrada predicted with extraordinary accuracy numerous earthquakes in South America during the last century. He did this by making direct correlations between specific astronomical phenomena and various catastrophic earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. By the way, he did, uh, he did the, the great earthquake in 1960 that caused massive uh, tsunami that struck uh, Alaska, 1965's earthquakes, and also in 1985. All of them exactly to the day of when they would happen. Uh, it goes on, his most significant prediction regards the future arrival of a great comet planet. Mr. Ferrata says it has three speeds at which it travels during its elliptical orbit. And that's exactly what he says. He said he calls it a comet planet because he said a comet has an elliptical orbit, which gives it three various speeds. He says it goes around a dark, uh, a dark sun at its furthest point in the galaxy there, and I forget how many billions of miles that is or kilometers it is from the Earth, but it's an extremely long way, so it takes it a long time to get here. And But he said what happens is when it's at one end of the universe, it's traveling uh, at, at so many feet per second, uh, so many kilometers per second there. When it gets uh, back around by us, it travels at a different speed, and then when it leaves our our solar system, again, it travels at even a faster speed. So therefore, I have kind of concluded myself from the different speeds that he's talked about and playing around with math numbers, uh, just from an amateur standpoint there, I've seen as well that I ended up with like a three-year span of when the thing could possibly come. And I think that's where the problem comes in with the astronomers today. They don't know for sure when it's going to change its speed. And where does it change its speed at? They only have a general idea of this, and therefore it makes it nearly impossible to determine for sure when it's going to get here, because it does change its speed once it enters our own solar system. But the question is when. This is what makes the scientists and the astronomers nearly impossible to be able to track this thing. I want you to be able to hear a little bit about what uh, Mr. Ferrada has to say himself about this very planet here. I'll read it for you as he speaks. He says, this body will not go unnoticed, everyone will see. 
And he says, there will be a lot of confusion, more than confusion, he states, and they will give many interpretations about it. Many, he says. Astronomers will say that, 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 that we will see Mars or something like that, but in reality, it is Herculobus. What consequences will it bring to our planet? He says, the most terrifying. He does go into a lot of other things in this interview here, and I encourage you to look it up. It is definitely worth watching. It is probably the most accurate information you will ever get on Planet X. Uh, and all you have to do is look him up by his name. His name is Carlos Manoz Ferrada. Look up him on uh, YouTube there, and there's many websites that are carrying this, this documentary video. It is definitely a blessing to be able to watch it. Another one here is Robert Fletcher, investigator and whistleblower Robert Fletcher. Um, Robert was made very well known uh, when he was in a, system, uh, a group of uh, investigative uh, meetings there in Washington where he was uncovering things uh, that the government didn't like him uncovering very much. Uh, we're hoping to have Robert on very soon. But anyway, uh, one of the statements he makes here, once the planet X, Nibiru, is closer, then what? First sightings will likely be in the month of December, 2014 or 2015 or 2016, with the series of effects hitting with, within four to five months later, the same time frame it had affected the globe previously. Now, I bring this out, and this is nothing against uh, uh, Mr. Fletcher whatsoever, but did you notice how he does that? 2014 or 2015 or 2016. This is what made people make, made them wonder and scratch their head. Is this kind of some kind of hoax or what? You know, everybody knows when, like uh, Halley's Comet, for example. Everybody knew when Halley's Comet was coming. They're able to track it. They know exactly when it's coming. But in this case here, this thing escapes the scientists altogether because they're just not sure, as I showed you with Mr. Ferrata, what he says about the traveling of this particular planet there. It's another reason why we saw also with John Kerry and uh, the French uh, foreign minister, what they said there. This was, uh, we see all the different dates for Planet X, and this is one of the reasons why no one believes it's real. Uh, something that our own little statement we threw in there as well on this one here. But this is what the French uh, foreign minister had to say here. Uh, the world has 500 days to avoid climate chaos. French foreign minister Laurent Fabius said alongside Secretary John State John Kerry at the State Department on Tuesday. Now that was back in September, uh, or 500 days before September of 2014 that he actually made this statement there. And the reason why I believe that he made that statement then is because they actually believed that this was going to be when uh, Planet X was coming by the first time. Remember, even like what uh, Bob said, four or five months later, you get the, the second part of the effect. So they're looking at being able to see it come up in September, and then you'd get uh, five months later, which would be February right about now, and that's when you get the tail of this thing because it goes around the sun and we catch two, two clashes with it. But we did not see uh, climate chaos at that time. Uh, and that's because they thought it was then, but it's not. And there again, I can't say for sure when, but I still do not think it's even this year. We'll just see as, as time goes on. Uh, again, let's take a look at Bob Fletcher and what he says again. But before, as, as the old saying goes, before you shoot the messenger, remember no one knows a day or hour. Don't forget that biblical verse on that. Bob Fletcher says the first sightings will likely be in the month of December 2015 or 2016 or 2017. See, when it doesn't happen, they back it up another set of three years because it's like they're always keeping it in a block of three years there. With the serious effects hitting the Earth over the following four to five months after the same time frame it had affected the globe previously. The estimate is derived from the studies of 2,000 years and 2,000 documents. Soon everyone will be watching the sky for the new star getting larger. Nibiru looking like a big single new star closer every day. Any smart dog should be watching from this December 2015 for the next few years. So I guess once you are able to see it like a dot in the distance there, that's when it begins to get closer and closer all along. Astronomers say Neptune-sized planet lurks beyond Pluto. And this is what got everything all stirred up. This is what caused people, it's even what caused me to finally say, okay, 
they're speaking about another planet. Could this be planet X? Now, they say planet X is a red star or a dwarf star and that it appears to be red. But there's also, in some of the other cases that I've seen, that they call it the blue planet and that it will appear red once it gets closer. I thought that was interesting when I saw this particular of the photo of a blue planet here. Anyway, uh, this is by Eric Hand uh, on January 20th of 2016. It says the solar system appears to have a new ninth planet today. Two scientists announced evidence that a body nearly the size of Neptune, but as of yet unseen, orbits the sun every 15,000 years during the solar system's infancy 4.5 billion years ago. They say the giant planet was knocked out of the planet-forming region near the sun. Slowed down by gas, the planet settled into a distant elliptical orbit where it still lurks today. The very fact they say it's in an elliptical orbit makes me believe also this may be planet X that they're talking about. The claim is the strongest yet in the centuries-long search for a planet X beyond Neptune. The question has been plagued by far-fetched claims and even outright quackery. But the new evidence comes from a pair of respected planetary scientists, Constantine uh, Bat Batgen and Mike Brown of California Institute of Technology. And there they are right there, these young men that it's speaking about there. But the new evidence comes from a... Uh, we already know that. Uh, so anyway, they're the ones that have discovered this planet out there. And it may very well be Planet X. Now, I want to switch gears a little bit. I want you to take a look at something that President Obama said. And uh, because I think it's very important that we, that we hear what the president had to say. A couple of things we're going we're gonna to look at what he says here. Let's catch this one right here on CBS. This was when he was being interviewed after uh, the climate uh, change conference there in Paris. Listen to what, the what he says in the interview here. State of the Union that no challenge poses a greater threat to future generations than climate change. Do you mean that it's a greater threat than terrorism? What I mean by that is that uh, we're going to get ISIL. They will be defeated. There will be ongoing efforts to uh, disrupt the world order from terrorists, from rogue states, from you know, cyber attacks. There's always some bad people out there trying to do bad things, and we have to be vigilant in going after them. But if you start seeing the oceans rise by five, six, seven feet. Uh, if uh, you see major shifts in weather patterns so that what have been previously uh, bread baskets to the world suddenly can no longer grow food, then you're seeing the kind of crisis that we can't deal with through the deployment of the Marines. We can't deal with it through uh, throwing money at it. But what we know is that uh, as human beings are placed under strain, then bad things happen. Uh, Can you imagine that? The, the ocean suddenly rising four or five uh, feet there. Uh, the certain areas, the weather changes so rapidly that where they once grew food, they can no longer grow food. Remember, they are doing a huge seed bank. A, a vault where all the real natural seeds are being placed into a cave into the earth there. They're planning on a new world order. But they're talking about a world order. I, and I just, this is only, again, this is a conjecture on my part. I'm beginning to wonder if this new world order isn't after this planet X passes. Could be wrong on that. We know they want to microchip everybody as it is. That's just a thought there. Anyway, let's move right along, though. If you remember, many of you guys remember, NASA blocked the portion of its own satellite footage a little while back. John Morris conducted exhaustive interviews and studies with countless military and government individuals regarding Planet X, a.k.a. Nibiru, who confirmed that Planet X, our solar system, the 10th planet, does exist and will cause tremendous devastation when it next passes by Earth. John lists numerous high-ranking government officials who have confirmed Planet X exists. It's just another evidence of a person there. But this was here was uh, uh, the NASA satellite footage that people could go online and watch. There for a good while, they just blocked it all out. So you could not see this particular image there. It's one of the things that really got everybody going. 
Now, I want to kind of turn your attention to now some of the prophecies that are laying out there about, uh, or appear to be more about something that Planet X could affect the Earth. Mother Shipton is one of those prophecies that really make you think that possibly Planet X could cause the very things that she speaks about. It says, For the storms will rage and oceans roar when Gabriel stands on the sea and shore, and as he blows his wondrous horn, old worlds die and new be born. A fiery dragon will cross the sky six times before this earth shall die. Mankind and tremble and frightened be for the six heralds in this prophecy. For seven days and seven nights man will watch this awesome sight. The tides will rise beyond their kin to bite away the shores and then the mountains will begin to roar and earthquakes split the plain to shore. A flooding waters rushing in will flood the lands with such a din that mankind covers a muddy fin and snarls about his fellow men. He bares his teeth and fights and kills and secretes secrets, foods, and secret heels. And ugly in his fear, he lies to kill and martyrs, thieves, and spies. People have been hiding food for a long time. Man flees in terror from the floods and kills and rapes and lies in blood and spilling blood by mankind's hands will stain and bitter many lands. Sad, isn't it? Here's the last part of it. Still mother shipped in here. And when the dragon's tail is gone, man forgets and smiles and carries on to apply himself too late, too late, for mankind has earned his deserved fate. His master smile, his false grandeur, will serve the gods their anger stir. And they will send the dragon back to light the sky. His tail will crack upon the earth and rend the earth and man shall flee, king, lord, and serf. But slowly they are routed out to seek diminishing water. Spout and men will die of thirst before the oceans rise to mount the shore. And lands will crack and rend anew. You think it's strange, it will come true. I find it very fascinating that she wrote this. Continuing on another speech here that President uh, Obama gave here. This one here, he is with the Coast Guard. And again, it's another little glimpse of knowing they know what's coming. I'm not either. But the best scientists in the world know that climate change is happening. Our analysts in the intelligence community know climate change is happening. Our military leaders, generals and admirals, active duty and retired, know it's happening. Our homeland security professionals know it is happening, and our Coast Guard knows it's happening. One thing I wanted to bring to your attention right here is when uh, President Obama says about the retired military knows it's happening. Bob Fletcher, in one of the interviews he was doing, actually mentions that he has met many retired military personnel that are living in, uh, I believe that's, it's, I want to say it's in Missouri, in that area there, considered a safe zone there, and knew exactly to the very foot the elevation where they live at. Because the thing was, according to what they know, they're supposed to be at a certain elevation in order to survive the incoming waters of the sea that will cover much of the earth. But there's only one way to be safe, friends, and that is in Yeshua. There is no other safe place to be, friends. No other one. Speaking of Yeshua, let's take a look at some of the words that he said here in Matthew 24. And I think this gives clue. You're fixing to start seeing some very serious things that he says here that gives clue of what's coming. Matthew 24, verse 34 to 36. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But at that day and hour knoweth no man, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Now, notice what he says. Heaven and earth shall pass away. Now, some people think that that means the earth will be totally annihilated as a result. And it makes you wonder, then, how then are we going to live on the earth in a millennial reign, the thousand years to reign with Yeshua, if the earth is done away with, as it seems to imply in this scripture here. 
Well, as the Noon Institute of Biblical Research, we also research documents that they don't have in the Bible, but are biblical text. And the next one here is from the Gospel of the Ebonites, chapter 61, verses 13 and 14. It parallels Matthew 24. That's why I want to read it to you, because it gives a little bit more clarity on that part of the verse. And then one of Yeshua's disciples said unto him, Master of the harvest, please tell us what shall be the sign of the, that we may know for certainty of thy coming. And Yeshua said unto his disciples, The eternal parent has appointed a time in a season for everything. So shall be the holy judgment of that age. So another reason why I say is planet X, God's judgment. For verily I say unto you, that age shall not pass till all those things be fulfilled. For the wicked heavens of Satan shall pass away and the evil of the world shall pass away. See, but my word shall not pass away, for my words are law and life and love. You see there, what is it? Heavens and earth shall pass away. The heavens, the wicked, the evil that Satan has done in the atmosphere and the wicked things that he's done on the earth, all of that will pass away. The sinners and the ungodly with it will all pass away. But if you're in Christ, if you're in Yeshua, that's the one safe place to be. In Mark chapter 13, verses 24 to 31. But in those days after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with great power and glory. Remember what we read a little bit earlier? The scroll, it opens up like a scroll. It looks like nothing but judgment. And they cry out, let the rocks fall on us. See? Then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When her branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer is near. By the way, when those angels come forth to gather up the elect, he's going to hide them. He hides them because this is his wrath coming upon the earth. Getting down to the next verse. This is verse, uh, verse 29. So ye in like manner, when ye shall see these things come to pass, know that it is nigh even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, that this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Again, Mark was quoting pretty much the same as Matthew 24. And as we saw in the Ebonite gospel there, uh, it's that it's the evil of the wicked men on the earth that passes away. Here's another one from President Barack Obama. This is when he is in Paris, France at the Climate Change Conference. Listen to what he says here. A declaration that for all the challenges we face, the growing threat of climate change could define the contours of this century more dramatically than any other. The it could change the contours of this century more than any other. Well, maybe this map has got some truth behind it after all, the future map of the world. Now right here, you don't get to see it very well. I have a couple of other places I inserted it to where you can see the United States, etc. there. We're going to talk about that in just a moment as part of this broadcast. Future map of the world. Everybody already knows about what the America is going to look like. And I showed you just recently in another uh, broadcast here what uh, Europe's going to look like in the Middle East. This may be why they're trying to have wars where they are. They're trying to get those lands that are going to survive and making sure they're under their control and no one else's control. Especially in the Middle East because a small land mass is left available. So they want to make sure they drive out all the occupants and gather that land for themselves. I want to share with you though what the book of Enoch has to say about this judgment as well. And for those of you that may not be aware of this, this is also in the Ethiopian uh, book of Enoch here. This was found in the Qumran scrolls as well. Uh, the, it was sold off by the Bedouin, uh, went to Kuwait. And the uh, researchers there on the Dead Sea Scrolls were able to at least make a photocopy of the entire book there. And from what the researchers have said, the Ethiopian copy and the one that they found in Qumran are nearly identical. 
So I do gives me much more uh, confidence in the validity of this book here. And by the way, Qumran was a uh, where the Zedekite priest went to. They were a big fight between the uh, the priests that that were there in the times of Yeshua, uh, the the Pharisees and the Zedekite priest. And because of the division, the Zedekites ended up having to go to Qumran. Uh, Pliny, the church father from uh, 70, the year 76 right after the destruction of the third temple, talks about that community there, and actually said two of Yeshua's apostles uh, came from uh, this uh, Ebonite community there that he said was on the northwest corner of the Dead Sea. Well, I think the only place northwest on the corner of the Dead Sea is Qumran. Anyway, so in that case there, I bring up plenty because it tells us then that no doubt that the book of Enoch was read by two of Yeshua's apostles. Uh, and this is in chapter 100, verse 1. In those days and in one place, fathers and sons will strike one another. Brothers will together fall in death, and to their blood flows as if it were a stream. I believe that this prophecy here is speaking about what is happening in the Middle East right now. Because the two brothers, the Sunnis and the Shiites, are striking each one uh, other. Fathers and sons. And they're killing one another in the Middle East. In chapter 102, verse 1, it says, In those days, if he brings a fierce fire upon you, where will you flee? And where will you be safe? And when he utters his voice against you, will you not be terrified and afraid? Verse 2, And all the lights will shake with great fear, and the whole earth will be terrified, and will tremble and quail. And all the angels will carry out their commands and will seek to hide from the one who is great in glory and the children of the earth will tremble and shake and you sinners will be cursed forever and will not have peace. Now it looks like the angels that, are, that, are, that carry out their commands are the ones that are hiding his elect during God's wrath. Now that's again a conjecture. I cannot say for sure. Here again is the map of the United States, what it will look like according to um, some of the people. This is supposedly was done by the United States military, what it would look like after Planet X or Nibiru were to pass through. Uh, and of course, the Middle East. And this is the one that I shared with you a little while back. I think it's very important, this one here. If you will notice there, it's very difficult to tell perhaps on your screen there, but uh, what survives in Israel is what is known as the West Bank today and Jerusalem, the very thing that everybody's fighting over. The Jordanians actually annexed that portion of land back during the, uh, uh, during, uh, this was during the 1948 uh, independence battle. And ever since then, it's been under Jordanian control or Palestinian control. It's under Israeli control now, but they're still trying to get that part separated from Israel. And why? The Pope of Rome knows that Italy is going to be totally destroyed. Rome, where his little headquarters is now, is going to be destroyed. So his whole idea is to move his headquarters to Jerusalem. And of course, it survives this passing of Planet X, as well as does half of the country of Syria. In fact, the most heated, contested areas of Syria and Iraq are the very areas that will survive. Mosul, Nineveh, Latkia, uh, all the places along the border of Turkey, all of that. And that's the part they're wanting to divide Syria. Why do they want to divide Syria? Oh, they don't mind giving Damascus to, 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 uh, to President Bashar al-Assad in the lower half because they know Planet X is going to be totally wiping out the entire southern part of the country. They don't care about that. And they're not really much worried about the Saudis either. Most of the Saudis will die in this thing to begin with. I doubt the Saudis even know anything. They probably kept them in the dark for the entire time. Who knows? Anyway, going on. In the book of Enoch, it also is written in chapter 100, verse 5, and he will set guards from the holy, from the holy angels over all the righteous and holy, and they will guard them like the apple of an eye, until an end is made of all evil and all sin. And even if the righteous sleep a long sleep, they have nothing to fear. You know, it's kind of interesting that he made that statement. The righteous, even though they may be sleeping a long sleep, they don't have anything to fear. Why? Well, they're buried in the earth. 
And we know that when you're buried, the body is there and the soul leaves. But it's so interesting that Enoch actually mentions that. Can't say really for sure why, but my thought is because their bodies are in the earth. I don't know. But nonetheless, he speaks about how the holy angels, over all the, they, they, they will, and he will set guards from the holy angels over all the righteous and holy, and they will guard them like the apple of an eye. See, so he sends his angels to protect his, those that keep his word. Now, as we get ready to close here, friends, I wanted to take you to Isaiah, chapter Isaiah. This is probably the most profound scripture of all that speaks evidently of the passing, or at least what would happen if planet X were to pass. It's the one scripture that's laid out that really lays it all out beautifully. Isaiah chapter 24, we're going to look at the entire chapter, and we're going to go through it quickly just for time. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be as, if, as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with his mistress, and with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled, for the Lord hath spoken this word. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languisheth and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. That's a shocker right there. They changed the ordinance and broken the everlasting covenant. The word of God that was given to Moses has been totally destroyed. Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. I mean, if this isn't the passing of planet, yeah, that's like the tail or something. And by the way, too, I believe, too, that when the two witnesses begin to do their ministry, they cause it not to rain in the days of their ministry. They bring down fire out of heaven, etc. You know, during that three and a half year period, as that planet gets closer and closer and closer, just like it was in the days of, of Moses and Aaron, it no doubt will have certain effects on the earth, and they'll know when those effects are going to happen. How, I don't know. God will reveal it to them, whatever. And this is when you're going to see the dearth in the earth. And as Obama says, what if suddenly there's no rain on the earth? Certain parts at once a bread belt. They're expecting all these things, friends. The new wine, verse 7, mourneth. The, vi the vine languisheth. The merry hearted do sigh. The, the mirth of tabret ceaseth. And the noise of them that rejoice endeth. The joy of the harp ceaseth. Okay? Verse 9, they shall not drink wine with a song. Strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it. The city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up that no man may come in. Everybody's hiding. Everybody's afraid. There is a crying for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. In the city is left desolation, and the gate is smitten with destruction. When thus it shall be in the midst of the land among the people, there shall be as the shaking of an olive tree and as the gleaning grapes when the vintage is done. They shall lift up their voice. They shall sing for the majesty of the Lord. They shall cry aloud from the sea. Wherefore, glory ye the Lord in the fires, even the name of the Lord God of Israel in the isles of the sea. From the uttermost part of the earth have we heard songs, even glory to the righteous. But I said, my leanness, my leanness, woe unto me. The treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. Yea, the treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. Fear and the pit and the snare are upon thee, O inhabitant of the earth. And it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit, and he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare, for the windows from the high are open, and the foundations of the earth do shake. The foundations of the earth do shake? The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall reel to fro to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it and it shall fall and not rise again. 
And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners as gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in the prison. And after many days shall they be visited. Then the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed. And when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his ancients gloriously. My friends, that is our presentation on Planet X. I know it's from one end to the other, but I really believe that what we're seeing, we're seeing God's judgment that will come in the very near future. I still believe that your two witnesses will come on the scene first. While they are here, as we have been seeing, all kinds of things take place with the climate changing drastically. It will begin to get greater and greater during their visit on the earth. And once they're killed, that will probably be when the tail of this thing comes swinging around. Who knows? I don't know exactly how God will do it at that time. But we are in the final hours. And from everything that I've found thus far, much more evidence out there, amazingly so. I just touched a little corner of it for you guys. But the evidence is overwhelming, especially biblical. And there's much more scripture I could share with you as well. I do believe you are seeing the coming of God's wrath with this planet, His final judgment. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom. Thank you.